Rhinoplasty is an ancient technique used by the Egyptians to correct or improve the appearance of the nose. Often triggered by physical or social traumas such as an accident or even just an outdated style. Amazingly, the surgical knowledge of ancient Egypt was more advanced than the rest of the world. By using clay and beeswax models, the surgeons of ancient Egypt were able to experiment with techniques and have a better understanding of the anatomy of a nose. They would use instruments like forceps, hooks, spoons, saws, and scalpels, and as well as dressings such as linen, linseed, honey, and resin. So if you think rhinoplasty is fascinating, wait until the end of the video to unravel the biggest discovery of all. As you probably know, the ancient Egyptians were the masters of turning stone into magnificent monuments and sculptures. The scale, accuracy, and beauty of their work still inspire awe today. But how did they accomplish such impressive feat with such primitive technology? Like everything else in ancient Egypt, the secret was in their tools. Let's examine some of the tools that ancient Egyptians used to change their simple chunks of stone into timeless works of art. The most commonly used tool for cutting and carving was copper chisels. These chisels were either made with copper rods or copper plates. Copper was an ideal material for this purpose because it was both strong and malleable, making it capable of handling the toughest carving task. The next tool the Egyptians used were a serrated saw called a dance. A dance was basically a large saw that was attached to a piece of wood or metal. The saw was run along the stone surface to create a precise lines and more intricate patterns. Finally, the Egyptians also utilized wet sand and gravel to pound and shape the stone. This technique was used to give a polished and smooth finish. So as you can see, the ancient Egyptians employed a surprisingly modern set of tools to create some of the most impressive monuments and sculptures in the history. Papyrus is a paper-like material made from the stems of a reed-like plant called Cyprus papyrus. The Egyptians found it grew along the banks of the River Nile, which provided them the ideal, low-cost writing material for their civilization. As for the ink, it was made from a combination of ground-up minerals, water, and a plant, root or tree sap. On top of this, they'd add soot, honey, or egg yolks to add color giving them a wide variety of options to choose from. Now, let's talk about how papyrus and ink were used. Ancient Egyptians used both papyrus and ink to write down everything from prayers and funeral texts to the earliest versions of our modern-day novels, songs, and stories. Scribes were highly respected in the Egyptian society, and so their work was valued both economically and culturally. It's also important to note that the technology of papyrus and ink has lasted the ages, with some papyrus sheets dating as far back as 2000 BC, still perfectly preserved today. As we all know, the ancient Egyptians are famous for the grand pyramids they constructed. But did you know that these pyramids have much more significance than just being enormous structures? The ancient Egyptians used their pyramids as astronomical observatories. By using astronomical knowledge, they were able to calculate their calendars, the length and direction of seasonal sunlight, and other celestial events. They were able to determine the location of certain stars in the night sky by measuring the angle between the star's position and the pyramid peak. This allowed them to chart constellations and calculate their movements in the sky. The Egyptians also used their knowledge in astronomy to orient their pyramids in a specific direction. This was largely due to their observations of stars and the sun. They chose the best location and time to build the pyramids in order to reduce construction costs. It's amazing how Egyptians were able to discover and make use of such advanced astronomical techniques. With their keen astronomical knowledge and skills in engineering, the ancient Egyptians truly revolutionized an ancient form of technology by integrating astronomy into their grand structures. It's actually incredible that people of ancient Egypt were able to craft such sophisticated artificial body parts. Using primitive tools and materials, they crafted limbs and organs to replace their missing body parts. Though, they performed surprisingly well and used by both pharaohs and commoners alike. Pharaohs would even go so far to patent their own prosthetics, 
showing off their wealth and status. It's amazing to think that prosthetics were developed so early in human history. Ancient Egyptians used leather, wood, and ivory to construct the limbs and organs. But we can easily see a recognizable shape to the prosthetics they created. In fact, some ancient Egyptian prosthetics were surprisingly advanced. They even used a type of alloy called Egyptian blue, which allowed for the creation of parts with more complicated shapes and more intricate designs. It's also incredible to think that even with ancient technology, these devices may have been more effective and comfortable than some of the modern prosthetics we see today. Before we continue, if you like our content, please hit the subscribe button as it helps a long way supporting our team. Let's continue. Enough with human anatomy, let's go ahead and touch mathematics. Pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, which holds an accuracy of over 22 million digits. An accuracy first set out in ancient Egypt around 250 BC. So why was this ratio discovered by the Egyptians? The Egyptians used pi when constructing pyramids, work considered meticulously to this day. How did they create such precision out of stone blocks? Well, they used a method of calculation which is still related to pi. The length of a rope segment with knots at each end to form a right angle triangulation. It's amazing when you think about it. Taking a circle, a simple shape considered sacred to the Egyptians, and constructing something around it, like structures that still stand today. The accuracy of its construction relies on the accuracy of pi, and without it, our contemporary architecture wouldn't progress as it has done. Pretty impressive stuff from a society that many perceive to be primitive. Hats off to the Egyptians and their skill and master of mathematics. For those of us living in the 21st century, the concept of time is almost taken for granted. We carry phones with us that have timepieces built into them. But back in the ancient world, accurately keeping track of time was a challenge. But that didn't stop the Egyptians. However, they found a way to measure time through a series of devices called clepsydras, or water clocks. These innovative devices determined the hour of the day by tracking the movement of water, literally keeping time in a jug. The Egyptians soon realized that different containers of water released at different speeds, leading to more precise measurements of time. This inspired the invention of special shaped containers, known as cone-shaped clocks or time spouts, that are able to measure time far more accurately. These containers were able to measure time far more accurately than the regular ones. Surprisingly enough, some of these time spouts were even used in courts of law so that evidence of criminal or civil disputes could be properly recorded. Now, when it comes to the design of these ancient Egyptian timepieces, it's incredibly impressive. Each device typically featured a distinct spherical shape and was decorated with engravings of the gods and goddesses who ruled time itself. No doubt you're wondering how something so modern-day originated thousands of years ago. Well, prepare to be wowed as we dive deep into the enchanting world of past Egyptian hygiene. It turns out, ancient Egyptians were actually quite obsessed with oral hygiene. The best evidence of this is a recipe for a powdery substance called rice toothpaste. It was created long ago for scrubbing and cleaning teeth. Adding a bit of panache to the teeth cleaning process, the next step involved breath freshening using mint-based products like coriander, mint, and anise seed. The concoction was sophisticated enough to even contain something called kifi, a pleasantly smelling mix of honey, fruit, and plants. Finally, it's reported that ancient Egyptian nobles rinsed their mouths with a substance called fenugreek water. Used in Ayurvedic medicine to this day, fenugreek water was created by boiling the herb in water, resulting in something like a herbal mouthwash. So there you have it, an incredible blend of ancient Egyptian cultures that created the modern-day toothpaste and breath mints we know today. Many people think of mummification as a form of bizarre body preservation, something along the lines of Boris Karloff in The Mummy. But beyond the sensational horror movie, there's something much more interesting going on. Because mummification is one of the most ancient technologies, it can be hard to imagine what methods and tools the Egyptians used so many years ago. Well, 
turns out they were pretty ahead of their time. For the ancient Egyptians, mummification was an expression of faith and reverence, a sacred ritual intended to bring the gods closer to their people. The process began with the removal of all the organs, save the heart, which was thought to contain the soul. This evisceration was an essential step in preventing rapid decay. Immediately following the organ removal, the body was washed in an assortment of oils and herbs, including myrrh and sadar. Once the body was clean, it was packed with a dry mixture of salt, sawdust, and spices known as natron. This compound had the power to desiccate the dead, drawing out moisture and preserving the deceased form for thousands of years. The mummy would then be swaddled in layers of pure white linen, sometimes even decorated with hieroglyphic prayers. Finally, the prepared body would be placed within an ornate and beautiful sarcophagus. For all their creepiness, mummies remain one of the most amazing strange practices of ancient world. Even today, mummified bodies continue to fascinate scientists as they provide clues about hidden aspects of Egyptian culture. As Egyptians built a vast powerful empire in the 3rd millennium BCE and beyond, they also developed a unique form of law enforcement unique to their culture. So what was the police like in ancient Egypt? First off, it wasn't quite like your modern police force. The police in ancient Egypt were comprised of both professional, full-time law enforcement officials, and as well as part-time, appointed citizens. As such, the Egyptian civil police were spread throughout the kingdom and were responsible for keeping order and maintaining peace. Their job responsibilities were varied, but mostly restricted to punishing crimes and vagrants and maintaining public safety. They also handled small disputes between citizens and even at times acted as a sort of spy network. The police had a wide range of tools to enforce justice, from whips to wooden rods, from wooden canes to prison cells. As one might imagine, their methods of justice were quite brutal. For example, it was common for the police to cut off a thief's hand as a punishment for his crime. However, it's important to note that the Egyptian police were also responsible for protecting civilians amid unrest. They serve an important role in the bureaucratic operations of ancient Egypt and were integral part of their culture.